Hi, this is Dan, uh, editor at Scooter in Magazine. We're just doing a small series of videos uh, in relation to an upcoming series of articles in the magazine. Um, the series will be headed up by Stan, who's doing a trip to Poland on his Lambretta. And this series of articles uh, and videos will revolve around the engine build. So we're gonna do a few unboxing videos of some of the products that we've got lined up to go in the engine. It's a small block engine. Um, for his Lambretta and so let's take a look at some of the products. Right, one of the first products that we're having a look at today is the Quattrini kit. This is the small block Lambretta Quattrini kit for Stan's trip to Poland. Uh, let's have a look and see what is inside the box. So this is the kit designed by Max Quattrini. Off the top of my head, I think these kits retail for around 650, uh, including VAT. Um, so in terms of some of the kits which are out on the market for small block, it does come in at the top of the price range or, or near the top. Um, but as you'll see in a minute when I unpack this, there's a reason for that. There we go. So that's all the bits and bobs. So we've got the kit here itself, which has the built-in reed manifold here. Um, which is a nice way of doing it. A lot of the kits use the separate manifolds. Um, they can have trouble with clearance on the frame tube. Um, this is obviously cast into the kit itself. It feeds through into a set of Boyson feeders which come through into the uh, main transfer ports here. Um, and it also has the uh, removal of the normal central spigot there. There is a very small lip which is used for the central uh, alignment of that. Um, and then the reblock stuffer which will go inside there um, to mount the carburetor onto. The piston, if I recall correctly, um, from the write-up that we did on this when we featured it in the magazine, is quite a nice unique bit of kit in terms of its uh, shape. Um, there's some interesting features throughout the kit in general. Um, not least of all, the way that the central bore of this is offset. So you get more fin area on the, uh, the side of the cylinder, which is renowned for running at a higher temperature to assist with cooling. Um, the actual port arrangement itself comes in with your normal transfers each side, boost port at the back, and inlet direct with Boyson feeders. That in effect is very similar to something like the RB200 kit uh, in that part of the arrangement. Um, but um, overall, lovely bit of kit. The power output of these will vary depending on what other components you use with it. And you'll see in a minute, if you look at some of the other videos, some of the other components we're going to use um, but what Stan is essentially hoping for um, from this build is something which has what I would call middle range power. He's not going to be building this to its full potential in terms of the crazy high horsepower that you can get from these kits, which we know some of the other tuners have already been having a little uh, go at and got some really significantly good numbers out of these little kits. So if you want to go to the high end, these can be tuned up with some really nice components, but Stan won't be looking at that. He'll be keeping the kit in its standard format, running it with a, a touring exhaust, a 30 mil carb, and a fairly nice touring setup, probably with a five speed gearbox, which we'll have a look at in a minute, um, in order to ascertain what he needs, which is a combination of good miles per gallon, good reliability, good power, and as we know that come from these kits, because we did the test ride on it with chisel speed, nice amounts of middle range torque with a good spread to get him up the hills, onto the headwinds uh, and out across where he needs to go. 
um, with <laughs> the most important thing, reliability. Um, so that's the kit we're going to be using. It's the Quattrini kit, £650 retail. Um, really, really lovely bit of kit. They are very well thought out, lots of attention to detail in terms of the thermals, the cooling, the type of head that is used, the compression ratios, the shape of the piston. Um, all in all, a really, really lovely bit of kit, well worth the money. And I think that this is going to be a nice bit of kit to convert the um, largely forgotten uh, small block engine into something far more interesting and usable. Right, the next products we're having a look at on Stan's Quattrini Poland build is the uh, Magflange. Um, a rather boring, innocuous item you might think, but um, these are the new ones from Uni. Uh, the sill stuff, the engine casings and the Magflanges, I think were looking rather um, worse for wear the longer they came out of the factory and now they're not coming out of the factory at all. So people are remaking the cases and the mag flanges. There's some really high-end stuff out there which is great um, but if your budget doesn't stretch that far or you don't see the need to buy the more expensive engine casings then there is some really good stuff uh, coming from um, Uni. Uh, what they've done is, is they've taken the standard mag flange and just improved it. So the normal weak spots of various bits snapping are now reinforced. The traditional threads, which would <laughs> thread uh, and then end up being bored out over and over and over, they've got more meat around those. Um, the overall finish and feel of this is one of quality. And these, I believe, are just under 40 quid. I think they're about 38, 39 pounds, something like that. So considering how much a second-hand mag flange goes for on various auction sites and other selling places, um, at 38 quid, uh, this represents, in my opinion, really good value for money, especially with the added thickness uh, supports and features that these have got. So a great bit of kit. Um, which should go well with the rest of the build and the rest of the components. Right, the next component we're having a look at is the SIP. I've not personally seen one of these uh, myself yet, so this is a first for me. Um, these crankshafts are a new range from SIP. Um, they're renowned for a ton of Vespa stuff, but this is a nice addition to their range. These cranks are made in Italy uh, for SIP. This is the 60mm um, version with a 116 rod um, to go with Stan's Quattrini build because that's the size of crank he needs for this. Um, the rods themselves, I'm very familiar with this type of rod. I've seen this or at least something largely similar to it in other um, high-end quality cranks. It's a shimmed big end. You've got two choices of little end for the different widths for the different uh, sizes of piston that you might variably use. And then clearly a high-end finish on a very well machined crank. Um, this is also a size with the 116 that will be specific to something like the RB200. Um, and then there are various other engines that might be using aftermarket pistons not using the standard Lambretta 39mm compression height, but probably using a 30mm compression height like a Yamaha piston, something like that. So this is a great piston for all of those. Also, any of the stuff where you want to use a large packer plate um, like RB250s and stuff like that, where you want to get that extra um, volume in the crankcase for low compression ratios. But these come in at around, I think, £234. Um, which for the quality of crank they are, for an Italian made crank with a, a good finish like this and a high end forge rod, this is the race rod, so it'll also have the race bearings in and as I say the, uh, the shimmed big end, um, that's good value for money. Um, I know that there are a lot of other cranks on the market at not much less money than that, which are not even close to this um, in terms of quality. So nice bit of kit here from SIP, nice race crank. Um, this will go well with the Katrini kit and provide us with the necessary stroke and rod length that we need for this kit for this journey to Poland. Right, the next couple of items that we're going to have a look at is the carburetor and the engine furniture. So at the moment we're just going to take a look at the carburetor he's using. It's the uh, Delorto. Uh, it's the 30mm flat slide. Um, these are great little carbs. Um, they can be a bit more fussy to set up than the 34mm 
flat slide. This is the VHSH 30. Um, it's the flat slide which gives a very good throttle reaction, which is probably more important for somebody on the racetrack than it is on the road. If you're on a budget, this level of carburetor um, will probably give you just a fraction more peak BHP, um, but will probably be a tiny little bit more thirstier than a round slide PHBH. I love the 30 mil. Uh, Delorto PHBH. I think it's a very underrated carb. There's a ton of information about the Delorto carbs out there, a ton of jetting information which makes them very easy to set up uh, and parts are readily available. So I'm a big fan of the Delorto stuff. This is a nice quality carb so if your budget can stretch to it uh, and you want the benefit of the peak additional peak horsepower then this is a great carb to go for and it will suit the Quattrini setup very very well um, as i say the peak horsepower is the real benefit and the quick throttle reaction uh, on the racetrack ultimately on the road um, maybe it's a bit of a compromise in terms of miles per gallon but other than that great bit of kit uh, and as i say it'll go well um, with the cylinder and the pipe and the crank that we're going to be using on the Quattrini build. The other bit of kit that we're going to have a look at in this video is the engine furniture uh, set up from Glasgow Lambretta. It's under their own brand which is, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, it's called Fortified. I'd not heard of that before but it's apparently their own in-house brand. They've got a few uh, items coming out under that uh, brand name so if you see the name Fortified you know it's from Gra Glasgow, Glasgow Lambretta. Um, the engine furniture kit I understand it's just over £100 and it's a really nice um, quality bit of engine furniture. Um, it comes with the swivel, uh, the cable block, the tie rod, um, the oil plugs and the breather plug. So nice bit of kit. Yeah, it's a bit of blink for your engine. It's not completely necessary if you're on a budget, but if you've got a few quid to spare and you want something that just finishes everything off nicely, some of the old stuff can have a lot of play in it. So that is one benefit for the gear change at least, um, that the action of it, it does take up some of the sloppiness in it. Um, it is a nice bit of kit uh, and it's worth the money in my opinion, if you want that nice uh, finish. To your engine. Okay the next item we're going to have a look at on the Quattrini Lambretta small block engine build for Stan's trip to Poland is the AF Race Speed uh, five speed gearbox. Um, we featured the press release for these in the magazine um, as and when they came out and then a few of the problems that they had on the first batch um, but this is the first time I've actually seen one in the flesh so uh, let's have a look and see what is in the box uh, and what it is you get for your money. Off the top of my head, if I recall correctly, these cost around the £500 mark, which for a five-speed gearbox, I think that they've really done well um, to come in at that price. Um, there are more expensive versions out there um, if your budget can stretch to it and you feel that there's a benefit from those uh, more expensive versions. But this is the 500 quid version from AFRA Speed. Um, if you followed it in the magazine, you may have recall, you may recall that on initial release, they had some teething problems. They went through quite an extensive testing process to make sure that the product they released to the public was as good as they could feasibly uh, get it. Uh, they believed that to be the case. And when the very first batch came in, um, it had just become apparent after they'd sent a few sets out that there was in fact an issue, not with the gearbox itself, um, which they had put through rigorous testing on the racetrack and actually instructed the race riders to try and break the damn thing and they hadn't managed it. Um, but it became apparent that further down the line there was a little bit of an issue with the original batch of these selectors actually having some hairline cracks in them. Now the good thing about buying from a company like AFRA Speed is that they stand by their stuff. And the minute they found out that there was an issue with those early selectors in batch one, um, they got straight on it. They recalled them, they put information out in the press. Um, they had this whole situation re-engineered, improved and taken up to a new higher level so that that eradicated that problem 
uh, reissued all new selectors to everybody who wanted them, offered refunds to those who didn't, um, which I don't think there was very many people who didn't um, want the new selector, uh, i.e. not many people went for a refund. So there's a ton of these now out in the open marketplace. We've got one here. Um, the five-speed gearbox. I think it was something that a lot of people wanted for a long time. Um, I don't think a lot of people really necessarily knew why. I think the natural assumption is if four is good, five must be better. Um, when various companies brought their versions out and then had problems with them and so on and so forth, I was a bit dubious about the cost and, and so on and so forth and what the benefits were. But now having ridden a few scooters with the five-speed gearboxes on, um, I think overall it makes it a nicer ride. There's a lot more benefits in terms of if you've got a peaky engine, this can help keep you in the power. Um, if you want to set up a nice touring engine, you can select, uh, for want of a better expression, it's not technically correct, but an overdrive gear if you so wish. And there are a few gearing combinations that can go with these to make it uh, make your Lambretta riding experience a more pleasurable one. And that's the bottom line. It isn't something which is absolutely necessary. You know, a good four speed close ratio gearbox on an engine with a broad spread of power, that's fine. We've been doing that for years and, and we've managed so far. But if you do want to have something extra in your engine, if you want to say, uh, have a, uh, an engine that's, you know, got the overdrive or that can um, utilize its peak power a bit better by having closer ratios and more of them, then this is a good bit of kit to do that. And unlike some of the others, you don't have to break the bank in order to do it. This is a 500 quid bit of kit. Comes with your, obviously, all the bits and pieces you need, um, as well as your, uh, obviously, your cluster, but also a, a selection of, uh, of shims, specifically, the thickness that you're gonna need when working with this gearbox. Obviously this gearbox just takes up slightly more space. Um, they, they've made each gear a little bit thinner, but then also got those gears slightly tighter together. But overall it takes up a little bit more space in, in the available area. So you usually end up using a thinner shim than you would normally on a four speed gearbox. But um, the updated poles for the gear selector um, are there. Um, nice bit of kit, just over 500 quid. This is gonna go really well into the fast touring build that Stan's doing for his small block Lambretta for his trip to Poland. We're currently now having a look at the exhaust. This is the CST-10. Um, this is a specific pipe to the Quattrini small block Lambretta kit that Stan is gonna be using. Um, it's developed by Chisel Speed. Um, they were known for a lot of years, uh, well, for a variety of things, but in terms of exhaust, more recently for the ADS pipes, which had a great reputation. They'd got the various touring, uh, mid and uh, high-end race pipes. Um, this is a continuation of that now. I notice it's under the CST brand, so I don't know if we can expect all their pipes to eventually move under that banner, um, but this is certainly coming out um, under that guy. So if you, if you want this pipe from Chisel Speed, it's the CST10. Retails at around 340 quid, and this particular one is specific to the Quattrini kit. Um, there's also, I think for all their pipes, a variety of end cans uh, in terms of the finish. Uh, I'm not sure which one this is. Um, right, it looks like the anodized black one. Just have a quick look. Oh, it's like a... a a matte black finish so it looks like these are coming from sip um, but with the cst brand to match their pipe so they use looks like they're outsourcing these um which is probably a more economical way of doing it for them and the uh, customer i would imagine um i'm sure all of you guys know this as i say it's not an in-depth technical but it's worth mentioning um no matter what engine you're building one of the single most important components of a two-stroke engine is the exhaust and you can have an engine which is too peaky for you uh, and go and grab yourself a really good touring pipe and it will transform it and vice versa you can have uh, a kit which is highly tuned but isn't necessarily performing very well because the pipe might be the wrong one it might be a clubman or a touring pipe or whatever and you want more revs you can change your pipe and get more power out of it obviously there's a lot more to it 
in terms of if you want to re-jet it, re, you know, change the compression ratio, tune it up and all the rest of it. But in terms of the most simple and effective changes you can make to any two-stroke engine, this is the absolute most important component. And with this one being dedicated to the CST, uh, the CST pipe dedicated to the Quattrini kit, um, I already know that this one works very well because I test rode it with Stan when they were first developed and Chisel Speed were um, letting us test ride the, uh, the Quattrini kit for the first time. So great bit of kit this, it's going to work well for Stan's tour to Poland. Um, I'm sure there are many things that could go wrong on the trip, but I don't envisage the exhaust being one of them. If you want to take a, a look at this, I don't know how much you can see on the camera, but it has this really long header tube here. And generally speaking, although you'll need to measure the overall tuned length of the pipe, um, these longer headers usually um, lend themselves to a, a, uh, a nice amount of torque in the pipe, lower end, power is really important with these longer headers here um, but as I say that's in conjunction with the overall tune of the pipe which actually you get this long header uh, and then a relatively shorter rear stub to it so it'll be it's interesting once you look at the uh, dyno graphs from these pipes how well they perform um, so nice bit of kit in terms of the finish um, of the welds the materials the thickness of the materials used and then the work that's gone into the design for the performance of the pipe itself. Right, the next series of items we're going to look at is uh, is the BGM items. Some of the BGM, some of the BGM items that we've got for this build. So this is very straightforward. These have been out for ages. These were released at a time when pretty much the only uh, other available or mainly available state of plate was the Indian stuff. And at that time, the Indian stuff was actually having a really bad time with quality control uh, and these came to light the BGM state plate there's a whole bunch of other stuff out on the marketplace now but at the time that these came out I just thought these were the absolute daddy um, really really well engineered piece of kit um, reliable come with all the necessary uh, gubbins that you need um, and overall for 80 quid good bit of kit um, this is their flywheel at a price point, it comes in at the upper end. It's, I believe, £190 for the flywheel. Again, there are more expensive flywheels out there. Um, so it, it's not the most expensive flywheel on the market. But again, for the, um, for the build quality, for um, obviously, it's, if you're going with the BGM stator plate, it makes sense to go with the BGM flywheel um, they're made to go together you can get uh, other stuff to work you know with other flywheels and other stators um, sometimes it'll fit straight off the cuff sometimes you need a little bit of adjustment on the height of the laminates of the stator plate or perhaps to use a packer plate on it if, if that's the case depending which combination you're using but um, if you're going to go you know for for the, the the bgm stuff then it makes sense in my mind to get those two items to work together um, and the last component that we've got in the BGM unboxing for this part of the video is a super, super strong clutch. Now I like strong clutches. The reason I like strong clutches is because traditionally when I worked at Scooter Otica, um, I used to get a lot of work building the higher horsepower engines. And so up to a certain element, I think we went through a, a good exercise with Daryl Taylor in one of our technical articles in the magazine where he tested the four plate clutches up to a certain point. Then when you get to that point, you need to go to the five plate clutches and then you're looking at perhaps str stronger springs and so on. Once you get beyond that certain point, back in the old school days, people did big crankcase conversion things and elongating kickstarts and all sorts of stuff like that. Just not necessary anymore. It hasn't been for a long time. People like uh, LTH and BGM just came out with these really, really good uh, quality clutches. Um, off the top of my head, this is 390. It's a complete unit, very, very well engineered, very, very strong item. This will handle a significant amount of power, which is more power. This will handle more power than this particular build is going to put out but it's one of those things that um this kit that that stan's putting together for poland 
it's capable of being far more powerful if he wanted it to be. So quite often people buy a clutch that only suits the build that they've got at that time. Then later on, they want to add some power to that and the clutch can't handle it, so they have to spend again. This is a really good item, uh, handles a lot of power, so it might be overkill for what we're doing now, but later on, if the kit is tuned or he moves to a, a, a higher level of, um, of engine performance, this is also going to handle that as well. So I really, really like the BGM clutches, great bit of kit. And then we've got the BGM flywheel and stator plate. Um, to go with this build as well. We're going to have a quick look at the uh, couple of suspension items that he's going to be using. So we've got a couple of EGM items here and also a reed speed item. Um, these are the probably very well known um, BGM front dampers. Um, I've used these on quite a few scooters and I really, really like them. But if anybody who's watching this will remember when I had a failed attempt at being involved in scooter racing. Um, but I had got it into my head that because of the overall duff geometry of a Lambretta frame and its swinging attached engine, that there wasn't much you could do to improve the handling of the scooter. And I didn't go to town. I got some okay bits on my scooter, but when I got out on track, I promptly found the shortcomings of my suspension uh, setup to the extent that eventually I just fell off and broke my leg. Uh, so that was quite a, a, a harsh lesson to learn. Uh, I'm not saying that's necessarily going to be the case for everybody, but it is if you ride like I ride, uh, which is like an idiot. Um, so I then fitted some better suspension items, and one of the first items I fitted was these um, BGM dampers, and they transformed the front end of my particular setup. I haven't seen the Reed Speed shock yet, so I don't know what to expect when I unbox that, so I don't know how that's going to go, but I actually also used the BGM um, rear shocker at the time. And between those two and some other alterations that I made to the, um, the engine bolt and the cones and some other bits and pieces, uh, and the brakes and tyres and one thing and another, overall the package was superb um, and it was vastly improved. Um, and it's then something that I went on to use on my road scooters after that, just because I was so happy with the way that it worked. But these are um, a really good bit of kit. Off the top of my head, I think these are £190. Um, they've got multiple settings on them. Um, they slot straight on. It's, it's not a difficult item to fit. If, obviously, you'll need the right links for those. If not, you can get the adapters for them. But another bit of kit that they do, which I think is really useful, are these um, brackets, which if you haven't got the damper bracket on your existing forks, then these are um, a really nice way of just adapting your existing fork setup without having to go to the trouble of uh, sanding them all down, welding on the new brackets and then having them whatever powder coated or painted or whatever again. You can just literally fit these on and fit these on. Uh, bearing in mind that the majority of the force is going to go through the um, suspension springs and that this is to damp the rebound so um, these are a really good bit of kit uh, I think I've got the price here so these are 55 pounds if you weigh that up between the cost of buying the 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 weldable links uh, well, brackets are only cheap but then if you've got to pay somebody uh, you know or go to the trouble of the labor of yourself of scrubbing off your old forks welding them on uh, measuring them up to make sure they're all correct heights once they're welded on they're in that fixed position so on and so forth this actually works out at a really really good um financially viable option and they actually look pretty trick too so i like these so that's a nice front end setup there uh, and as i said i don't know what to expect from this because i've not seen this reed speed one before but it um if if it if it's like any of the other stuff that comes out of reed speed it's gonna perform really really well so it looks like it's got a, a nitrogen based um system going on here obviously fully adjustable spring height and then various settings on this which is just a simple click setting so again we all know how to fit a, a rear suspension unit and then it's just a case of knowing how to then set up the correct spring and um, damper settings so that you get the correct um, sag and all the rest of it but I say it's not an in-depth technical it's more of an unboxing to see what we're going to use. Stan, the brightest way possible I can put it, is a big unit. He's a big tall heavy bloke uh, and so he needs good 
uh, bits of kit like this um, to make sure that his ride to, to, uh, to Poland is, um, is as comfortable and safe as possible. So I think these will do the job. So hopefully, as Stan gets out on the road, this should be a well put together piece of kit. We'll investigate it, see how the power goes, see how the miles per gallon goes, um, see how the gearing setup works and report back as Stan goes to Poland and we'll keep you informed. Stay tuned, keep an eye out on the Facebook page, keep an eye on the website, follow it in the magazine if you want to, I recommend it. Thank you.